decision, man. I was good. It was a tough decision. It was a very close fight. Uh, Luke Campbell showed um, a lot of promise tonight. And, um, you know, it's a tough fight for both fighters. I mean, that was one hell of a fight for the lightweight division. And we haven't seen two lightweights of that caliber in the ring together for quite some while now. So I'm so glad to see such a close fight. And it's like this, man. In boxing, it is the sport of boxing. Knockdowns, clear factor. Um, aggressive misplays a factor. Um, Ring boxing plays a factor. It all depends on what the judge fancies the most. Um, it's like last week in the Canelo fight. If you look at the fight, Canelo landed a lot of big punches in the big rounds. He may not land as many as, as Triple G did, but he landed big punches. And really, he was expecting to see big punches landed from Triple G, not from him. He was landing the big punches, Triple G was landing the more punches. So, it's, yeah, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter, but what really matters is that you got two guys who are at the top of the division. When you have two guys at the top of the division, this is what kind of fight you're supposed to get, unless somebody can get lucky on a knockout. And when I say get lucky, it's because you get lucky or you set a guy up. Now, most guys have a hard time setting guys up that on that level to knock them out. So either they get lucky or they can be good enough to where they can really set them up and knock them out. Um, really top notch fighters like that shouldn't be able to be set up to be knocked out that easy because these guys are at the top. So that's why I say you're lucky if you get a knockout. That's what happened last week. Both guys are so well schooled that it's very difficult for one guy to set the other guy up and knock him out. But like I say too, tonight you saw a perfect example of it. Last week you saw a perfect example of it. When two of the top dogs meet, that's what we're supposed to see. I'm unfortunate sometimes one guy has to walk away with a loss and one guy walks away with a win. But that's what we want to see. Two guys who show us that this is why Roy, you know, with Andre Ward retiring this week, you and him, that's one of the all-time matchups fans are going to talk about for years. So whether it was 68 or 75, who does Roy the analyst, you know, figure to win that fight, hypothetically? I don't, I don't talk about stuff like that. We were in two different eras, so I really don't say nothing about nothing like that, you know. Uh, Andre had a great career. Andre was a brilliant fighter. He was a guy who was kind of like I was a sugar runner. He looked up to me like I looked up to sugar, so you don't talk about, you know, who would have won. It don't really matter because we weren't in the same time. So it's like, when he did his thing in his time, I did my thing in my time, we did our thing. And it's just what it is. How, how different did you guys fight? We fought a lot different because, um, now, I was a risk taker a little bit more. He called more smart and more conventional, so we were quite different. What you say now? What is uh, Canelo or Triple G doing the rematch to assert dominance? I mean, what you got to do like they got to do like uh, Andre did in the second Kovalev fight. They got to go out, go back home, make adjustments to change what they did this first time, and whoever can make the most adjustments will win the second fight. Just like in the first fight with Ward and Kovalev, I thought Kovalev probably edged it, but it should have been called probably the draw the first time. The second time Ward came back and revamped his game, changed things around, and took total control of it. So, we hope the same thing can happen the second time in this fight, but whoever makes the adjustments is who will prevail as the champ. Who has more room to adjust, Roy, after uh, you? Both fighters can adjust, but uh, Canelo being the youngest probably has more room. Talk about the shakeup in the middleweight division with Danny Jacobs actually signing, coming to HBO with not a shake up. It's not a shakeup. He's the third best middleweight in the world right now today. It's not a shakeup. I mean, we had to have well, I mean, shakeup in the way that he was without him in Showtime. And I don't do all that. I don't, I don't run about all that. But I don't do all the talking about Al Haven and who did what with who at HBO. Show. I don't do all that. I'm glad to see the man got a contract with somebody that he can fight the top of the two middleweights in the world. I mean, cool. It don't matter who you with. It's you can have the best fight. See, people get it pushing with you. I don't care about who you with. It's like, what you want to be able to do is have the best fights for you at the time. And we should always make it so it's the best to fight the best fight for you. If you don't, we kill the sport of boxing. By the head in the building, y'all get that round. By, by the head, uh, round, by the head, bang of the volume two, coming out very soon. Yeah.